we are. Hello. Everyone Did you leave. make it to where people can actually hear us? They can hear us. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's now like the thing we have to start out we with. Start that. Out with can, you hear can you hear us? Um, hey everybody, welcome to Labyrinth um, Games and Puzzles, uh, ABCs and one two threes of game schooling. Yay! Yay! I'm here obviously with Melissa and Rich, um, our game schooling team, and this week we are talking about um, their expertise, uh, preschooler games. Um, yes. During the normal times, as many of you may know, Labyrinth Games and Puzzles runs a um, significant after-school program at usually between 12 and 15 local schools. Um, and one of our big areas of expertise is going into schools um, in elementary age, and we run one class that is a pre-reader, preschool, um, pre-K, pre-kindergarten class, and then um, we also run classes for older kids. But today we're focusing on Rich and Melissa's favorite preschool games and a couple of mine. Um, and so let's get into it. Yeah. I think I think it would be interesting to talk a couple things about just playing games with preschoolers. A lot of times people come in all the time and they're like, well, my kids two or three or whatever, they can't play games yet. Um, what would y'all say to that? That is nonsense. There are <laughs> so many games that are geared specifically for that age. Um, oh, I think that um, <laughs> uh, Yoni is saying that he thinks that Camilla is... Uh, she forgot to cancel the raffle. Cancel the raffle. <laughs> or the raffle. Yeah. All right. But he is fixing it. So we are not giving away a roll of D20... Uh, membership today, but Sorry. we can if anybody wants one, put it in there, and I'll I'll let you know because I have some. Um, okay, but um, yeah. So I definitely think. I mean, it depends on the kid, right? Like every kid is different. All of them are different. I definitely, with my own son who's now sixteen, we played games from the time he could function. Um, like from the time he realized his hands were connected to his bodies, mm -hmm. we started doing games and puzzles. And by three or four, he was playing Uno and Quirkle and a lot of like significantly older games. Um, at that time, I didn't know as much about preschool games as I do now after owning a game store for 10 years. Um, but we definitely played all kinds of games when he was very, very young. And I think it's really about... The involvement of the parent or caregiver, um, the involvement of being able to adapt to the games. It was really funny. Before we went live, I'm like, do y'all really know the rules <laughs> to these games? Because we play them with um, preschoolers so often that a lot of times we adapt <laughs> the rules to them and we forget what the actual rules are. Um, but what do y'all think? Well, um, I was going to start off by talking about Duck Duck Dance as just a really good activity that's very physical. And I think that's one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't realize when they think about like board games as activities for kids is that the really young ones can be super duper physical. And in Duck Duck Dance, we've got a bunch of these colorful dice. Um, so they've all, you've got a whole bunch of different colors that you're rolling all at once, and our job is to put together a dance to make the audience happy. There's all these little animal audience members on lily pads that we're flipping over one at a time. And uh, when I've done this with groups before, it's just a matter of, you know, we'll all drop all the dice on the ground, and then we figure out, okay, which one's the red die? Because the log that we're plugging all the dice into have different color spots. So we put the red one first, and that one might say twist, or it might say jump up. Um, but or do a star. Do a star, <laughs> right. And you just line up those actions. You're actually sequencing the actions, although you know you don't have to talk about that to the two-year-olds who are playing. But you you uh, set up the different actions and do them in an order, and then you know I'll jump up, I'll twist, I'll do, make a star, and then one of the audience members will flip over happily. And we just do that four times, and by the end of that, we as a team have done our duck-duck dance. Um, I think the great thing for this is it's actually um, like my very first programming game. You're basically sequencing the actions and then teaching the child 
um, to learn to follow instructions and follow rules, and it's all built into the game. Um, and it's really fun. Uh, we take this a lot of times, too, at the game nights that we do at local schools, and I always end up dancing with all the kids. And we... It's for two-year-olds, and two-year-olds love it, and it's very silly, but I have played this all the way with kindergartners up through first grade and stuff. So if you have a younger child and an older child, this is one that they could get together and do it, and it's just so silly that it's actually really fun. Yeah. Um, I guess to talk about a little bit about preschool games, sort of the two biggest ones are that all of these games have an age limit on it. Um, they're mostly pretty young. Some of them are as young as two plus. If your child is three or four and they are like drawn to duck duck dance, it's fine. Like, yes, it says two on it. It's mostly because it means that people younger than two are probably going to put something in their mouth. Um, so don't worry too much about that age limit, um, at the younger ages, um, the other thing is parent enthusiasm for these games. A lot of the people that come into the store have had kids recently and they are gamers like we are and they desperately want their kids to play games and that is awesome. Um, however, they'll pick up some of these preschool games and say, well, this isn't very fun and I you know, usually turn to them and very politely tell them that, well, that's because it's for two-year-olds and they think it's amazing. Um, so I know I don't want to play here fishy fishy with my gamer friends, but I do very much want to play it with two-year-olds because I think it's great. Um, especially, like, even if you go on, like, uh, any of the board game rating sites, a lot of the kid games tend to get rated fairly low because they're being rated by adults. Right. So just keep that in mind, um, that they really are fabulous, but you have to just think about who the target audience is, and it's probably not you. <laughs> yeah. That's a super well, fair point, and yeah. I might be weird in that I a little bit do want to play here fishy fishy with my gamer friends. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Um, it's funny, we actually have a rating system for kids' games about how good of a drinking game would they make. Um, but yeah, I think that another thing that's really important when you're talking about preschool gaming is knowing that children at, you know, two, three years old have incredibly limited um, focus and attention spans. So... It's not a good thing to ever force a child that's that age to play a game. It's really more about catching them when they're interested and then kind of adapting the game and not being so fixed about the rules. If they want to say, oh, mommy, I want to put all of these, or daddy or whoever, um, I want to put all of these dice in a stack and let's do it. Great, you know, mm -hmm. like let the child kind of guide some of the um, rules and gameplay. And a lot of the games that we've picked out today have a lot of just independent playability as well. But I also think it's tr it's really good to try and add those um, kind of defining rules and things because that will get the kid used to it. Um, I can't tell you, a couple of preschools, when we first opened, when we went to preschools, I was amazed that children that were four, five, six-year-olds had never done a spinner or rolled a die or, um, you know, and a lot of those are sp really important preschool skills, just um, fine motor skills, gross motor skills. A lot of that is stuff that they're going to do in school, and it's way more fun if you do it with a game. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what's yeah. our next game? Here, Fishy Fishy. Oh, yes. Here, Fishy Fishy. This is my favorite. Um, this is a hobby game. You will notice that there are quite a few yellow games on our table today. Um, Hava is a German game company, and I think that they make some of the best um, young child games. I absolutely love them. Um, this game you have seen a million times, and this is one of the games that people frequently say, this is silly, this isn't really a game. Um, and you all have seen lots of going fishing type activities at different places. I really like this game though, because it's actually a little bit more involved um, than what you're thinking. And I actually played this with my step grandson and he loved it. And we had little pieces all over the house and it was great. I don't know where our rod is. We don't have a fish. Uh, I don't know, okay. I know. Okay, so we don't have a fishing rod, but I will show you what this is. Um, it has all these different colored fish and um, octopus and seahorse sea and a, a starfish. 
And what you do is it comes normally with a little rod that has a magnet on the end. Um, but you actually have to roll the die and whatever color you roll, you're going to try and fish for that fish. And then once you get that, like be it a seahorse or whatever, you then have to find the piece of the puzzle that is that color and your scoreboard is this little puzzle. So you have to figure out where that puzzle piece goes into the puzzle and you put a little puzzle piece in. So I think that the puzzle part and the figuring out what color you have to find and you're trying to fish for all of the fish um, and then build your puzzle, that adds another level of complexity and kind of learning that most just fishing toys don't necessarily yeah. have. Like I love that the child has to associate the red fish with the red bucket. Um, and so they're learning those colors and learning, um, I'm sorry, different vocabulary and things like that. Sure. Yeah, back when we were doing uh, first moves uh, in the store, but in the before times, this was always a really, yeah. really popular one. Like yeah, you can things. see our boxes kind it's of very well, which loved. is probably what happened to our um, to yeah. our <laughs> fishing yeah, rod. Yeah, I'm worried yes. maybe it fell out while I was moving the demo. Around. <laughs> well, I think I mean yeah, this is kind of a trash thing. We're gonna have to ask Kaba for a new fishing game. <laughs> um, but yeah. it lasted a long it time, did. and this, it did. this copy says seen probably hundreds of kids playing with it yes so, and the well and i actually took it once um last year we did a couple game days at children's hospital and this was one of the games that i took and there were all these kids in the um in the lobby of children's national hospital like playing the here fishy fishy it was awesome i loved it it was great but i love here fishy fishy yeah. there's an entire series that haba does of these my very first games and they're all really really wonderful all right so next up to talk about we've got there's a bunch of games by smart games that are like little puzzles that you do um, so this is the brain train that's sort of rolling across, and it's also great because it's a toy train that it's everybody loves, like the trains. Um, but it comes Ooh, with this little booklet that has challenges, and again, this is not something that you would want to force or inflict, but if we take interest in it, it's really cool because the, the flip book here has different levels of challenges, on, and let's see if we can see, on one side it'll show you um, you know, you need to get it to line up this way, and on the back it'll have the solution of what pieces needed to go where with the ropes drawn in. Um, so to do this puzzle, this one's already solved. I've got my little green one that goes in here, and I need my blue one to go there, and the shapes have to go in the right shape, so we're matching shapes, and it's super tactile, and you've got three little trains, and as it gets more challenging, in the yellows, we start adding in even longer trains and more pieces, and it'll start showing blank spaces too, of not telling you exactly what goes where. Um, so really, really young kids can play with this, right? Um, and it's just super, super tactile. It's good at gripping and um, also has to be probably one of the more fun toys that we've got. Yeah, it's super cute. The, uh, Sleeping Beauty and other games that come in white boxes like this. So Brain Train comes in one of these. But most of the smart games like that are going to start at a really young age, usually three or four, and then they go up from there. Uh, three Little Pigs smart games? Yeah, yeah. Little Three pigs. Little Pigs. Um, I really like a lot of the ones that go even older. Mm -hmm. Brain Train doesn't do this, but a lot of the other ones, they have the fairy tale line. Yeah. that has Little Red Riding Hood, Three Little Pigs, and Sleeping Beauty, and they all come with a book so you can tell the story and then get into the puzzly aspect. Sleeping Beauty is a maze um, puzzle. Uh, Three Little Pigs is more of a po polyomino type puzzle, and then um, Little Red Riding Hood is a path puzzle. Um, but I love this one for beginners. I think it has a lot of playability. But you have color recognition, you have shape recognition, you have um, visual discernment, a lot of puzzle and logic thought. It's just an incredible um, beginner.
beginner puzzle. And a lot of like, is the red cube before or after the whatever color? Yep, you can work on preposition mm -hmm. big time. I could probably stand to play this game more because I'm having a little puzzle problem with putting the pieces <laughs> into the box. And I like the books that come with them because at least on Three Little Pigs and Little Red Riding Hood, they're just picture books. They don't have any words in them. <laughs> That's all right. Just yeah. put it down. That's true. We'll do it later. Like, to the tray. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take it. That's the real challenge okay. of the portrait. Okay. <laughs> what are we doing next? Uno move. Oh. Uno move. Yay. This is a ridiculous game. It's so, so cute. <laughs> so we actually got this game by accident once. I had ordered Uno from Mattel and they sent us this game and we're like, this is ridiculous. This is silly. I was doing what people do all the time. And then we decided to take it to a class and the children absolutely love it. And then all of our teachers loved it. So um, we ended up getting it, and it's now one of our best sellers for preschool. And it has it, a handle. It does. It has a handle, and it has this amazing um, little barnyard, and it has these crazy, goofy um, little people and animals and all kinds of stuff. Can we play a quick round? Yes. All right. So it's basically the card game Uno, but one of the difficult things for for young kids when we're starting to play games is the motor skills that you need to hold your cards without showing other people it's really tricky um, to develop that um, so before we are able to get there this is great because you've got these you know easy to grip little figures little people and little animals um, like this blue ch uh, blue chicken yeah. um, I have a blue pig right blue pig I have a blue cow and also, there's <laughs> there's no hidden information in this game. It's not a big deal if, if uh, you know, if Melissa gets to see the animals I have or if I see the animals that Kathleen has because we're all supposed to see everyone's animals all the time anyways. Um, and it's pretty tricky to keep secrets when we're really little. <laughs> um, so we play the game. If you've played Uno, it's going to feel pretty similar. We start with one animal on the ledge of the barn here, and that's going to have a color and a type of animal. So you can either match that animal or the color, just like you would match the number or the color in Uno. And I don't have any yellows, uh, so I might not be able to match, except I have one of the two special pieces. I have the farmer here, and the farmer is wild. So I can put the farmer in... And now Melissa has to match my farmer, but before she does, I say what color she has to match. So I see that she doesn't have, oh, she has all the colors. So I'll just say uh, yellow. In that case, I'm going to play the other special piece I have, which is a skunk, which means we skip Kathleen's turn. Oh! Also, yes. Hannibal Monster points out that the Uno Moves case is also excellent as Warhammer or D&D &D terrain. <laughs> <laughs> it is. They've actually used our Uno Moo uh, barn frequently in their miniatures wargaming. Okay, so we come back to me, and now it's red. Red cow. Moo. <laughs> you did a red cow? Mm-hmm. Mm. Any cow. I am going to do a... Um, uh, Red pig. Ooh, okay. And I have a red skunk, and skunk is for skipping. Oh, no. So uh, how and this is an interesting point as far as modifying game rules. This is one where um, when we were playing with the early childhood kids, we took out the skipping skunk part because it was pretty rough on some kids who yeah, just really didn't want to skip. Really <laughs> um, but, you know, that's also a really fun thing to add in once we're... So now, can I play my skunk? It matches that. Okay, and so... And now I get skipped. Yep. Oops, my skunk fell in. He's okay. It's a He's green okay. skunk. Green pig. Right. Green pig? Green pig. Okay, I'm going to play my blue pig, I think. Oops. Okay. Blue, blue pig. pig. Got a blue chicken. Got a blue cow, and I say Uno Moo because I only have one left. Oh no, I didn't say that when I had one. Left. Uh oh. I say Uno Moo. Uh, so I have to draw another animal. Have to there. draw one because you didn't say Uno Moo. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a cow, so I'm gonna say Uno Moo, okay. and the lay a green cow. Oh. And I'll play <laughs> sheep, and we'll and see. I do not have one that I can play, so I would draw one out of the container. 
That is how I am. But look, I win! Oh, no. Yay! Yeah. Team Kathleen! Team Kathleen, Kathleen is already ahead. <laughs> That's not Goodness. good. All right. Team That's Staff is going to have to rally in the next couple games. That we <laughs> Um, but that is Unomu. Unomu is not cooperative, but it is definitely very fun and silly and gamey, and you can um, make it make it as competitive as you really want, and you can tell stories about the animals in the barn and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But Unomu, surprising. It was a shocking find for us. All right. The next game we have to talk about is actually a set of sort of three activities. It's Sunny and Stormy Day. And this is a game slash also like learning about emotional health for three-year-olds, which sounds a little bit overwhelming, but it's not. So in this game, thank you. The first thing is there is a little story about our hedgehog friend and he goes through his day and he has some sunny or happy moments or some stormy or sad moments in his day, which you can then talk about with your child. And that's the first activity. The second one is a memory match game with a little bit of a twist on it where if you turn over this moon tile, or if you don't make a match, you have to add a piece to this jigsaw puzzle over here. Once the jigsaw puzzle is complete, you've lost the game, or if you find all your matches, you've won. And the uh, cards are all made up of different scenes from the book, so that's a good thing to talk about. And then the last thing, you get this adorable little pouch with tokens in it that'll have different pictures on them. And for example, if you pull out a storm cloud, you can say something that made me sad today is there were lots of mosquitoes in the store today. Um, and you can talk about that with like your kids and it just helps them sort of process things. So this is like sort of a fabulous quarantine COVID game uh, to help kids just like talk a little bit about what they might be feeling because it's hard for little kids. Yeah. If anyone Definitely. out there recognizes uh, some similarity between an old game called Sunny Day Pond, which was a wonderful game. This one is sort of in that lineage. Um, and it's a great introduction to jigsaw puzzles. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you some context for why are we putting this jigsaw puzzle together, and it's part of this game. So you, um, yeah, jigsaw puzzles are great for your brain. Mm -hmm. And it's only six pieces, so mm -hmm. not too hard. Yeah, another um, thing to mention is this is another brand that we love for preschoolers. It's called um, Peaceable Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Most of the games in the Peaceable Kingdom line are, or are cooperative. I know I had someone the other day telling me that they had just heard about cooperative games. Cooperative games, if you are not aware, if you're a new parent or um, have not done a lot of gaming, cooperative games are games in which everyone plays together to try and beat the game. Um, and Peaceful Kingdom is a company who has done a really, really good job at that. And most of their games are cooperative. So that's another brand to always look at when you're looking for preschool games. And they're also super environmentally friendly. Like all of their games are entirely recyclable or and made from like recycled material, which is really nice. Yeah. Oh, and they print the rules on the lid of the box, which is amazing. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that, that's <laughs> like, I, they should do more of that. <laughs> all right. Next up is another one of our class favorites called Snug as a Bug in a Rug. I think that this is possibly one of the best game schooling games for preschoolers. I like, agree. And it um, is cute. I think this hits everything, well, a lot of what you do in preschool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to grab some bugs. Take bugs go off to the side. So all these cute little circles are our bugs. And they're hanging out on the top of the rug. But what might be kind of hard to see is that this board is on little feet. And you can easily slide bugs underneath. So I got that one for free. More bugs, just in case. All right, so on these bugs, we have a bunch of different things. We have a little shape. We have a color. And then we have different numbers of those shapes. So this one has three squares. And then we have different eye size. So we have bugs with big eyes and bugs with small eyes. So that's like a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, and this game is great because you can start off as simple as you need to. And it has this nice big chunky die with all sorts of different things on it. So you're going to roll it and not roll it off the table. So I got colors. So let's see. I'm going to pick red for colors. And I'm going to pick a red bug. And the red bug goes under the rug. So that's level one is you just pick one attribute to focus on. So it could be numbers. It could be shapes. It could be colors. So that's level one. Once your kid mas uh, masters that, 
uh, you can go on to level two, which is where you roll this die again, and we get numbers, and then you get to spin the spinner, which is exciting for kids. They love this. And it says numbers, so it is now on the line. So this one is now pointing at two. So I need to find a bug that has two shapes on it. There's so there's one. Bug. Kathleen, can you help me put the bug under I the can. rug? I can. I'm going to put the bug under the rug. He's now just stuck as a bug. All right, Rich, do you want to roll? Sure. I'd also like to say that the spinner is really, really cool. There's so much mm -hmm. information on it. It's really dense. Like, it has every category. So I have colors, right? And I'll spin. And the inside of the spinner, I'm pointing to blue. But I can also see other things yep. that I'm pointing to as well. But uh, blue, blue, I want this one. I'm going to put it under the rug. Yep. Um, all right, and then the last level is that you roll this dice and you get a. I want something other than colors. <laughs> I'm cheating right now. Okay, so I got numbers, and then so that's one category, and then the second one is I pick something that is not numbers on this board. All right, so I'm gonna go with little eyes. So a number two with little eyes. Is there one of those on this board? I don't think so. I don't see one. Uh oh, so we get a stink bug. So if we can't find something that matches it, we put a stink bug on the rug. And if we get three stink bugs, we do not win. So if we do that again, let's say I'm going to do colors and purple. So I'll pick three and purple, and this one goes under. So you can combine categories, you can subtract categories, and they all go under this bug rug, which I think is really cute. Um, and it is just fabulous and great. And I like that you actually like hide them under the rug when they're done just to help with like the visual discrimination of seeing all the stuff. So yeah, love Snug as a Bug. Yeah, and I think that this is a game that you can play with very, very young children mm -hmm. playing the simple way, mm -hmm. but it grows with your child and yes. at um, more complex levels, they actually have to start thinking strategically mm -hmm. because if you're going um, with a yellow, and you have a whole, uh, you know, two different yellow ones, but you have a whole bunch of the number three out there, but only one number one, you have to think through, mm -hmm. oh, I want to take the three because, you know, I, I have a lot of those and I don't have very many with the number one. And you have to start thinking through strategically um, some probability and mm -hmm. things, which yeah. is incredible to be able to do with three and four year olds. Yeah. yeah. Yep, I, I, I love this game. This is a good one. It works. Numbers, colors, um, visual discrimination, um, and uh, attributes and matching and everything. Like, it's almost, yeah. that is like preschool in a box. <laughs> you took snail pace with snail pace. <laughs> <laughs> you may talk about snail pace uh, race right. now. Snail pace race uh, <laughs> is... My favorite game that everyone else here hates. Uh, I think I it's a great game. I don't hate it. I just don't think it's a game. Okay. <laughs> so what's what's so some of our preschool teachers love sales pace race and others do not. Yeah. Um. So Rich is uh to say something positive. I do love the snails. Yeah. The snails are these great chunky wooden snails. They're just fun to play with, and it's also just a really good uh introduction to die rolling as a as a mechanic in games and color matching there's not a whole lot more than that to it uh, <laughs> i will be the first to admit but we're playing to find out what happens um it's not really a winning or losing game you pick a snail that you might be rooting for orange snail. i'm rooting for green orange right. snail. green okay. green snail green snail hey, look, green gets to move one because i rolled a green and blue gets to move one because i rolled a blue this game uh it came out in 1985 originally so it's older than i am uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the way they make me feel old. Hey, it's, I'm older than this game as well. Yeah. Um, That's very gross. But I, it's it's really good because um, it's a fun. It's just a fun game to have. Uh, that is a the card kids to, actually really they, really they, like they, it. Kids will Ooh, gather around. And green. There will be crowds Ooh, of, green, green, green. of like you know anywhere between three and eight kids just like huddled around the board all like cheering for their snail to win um, so this is an important thing children love dice yes. all children yes. never ever ever fails all children love dice mm -hmm. there is something about the probability of rolling dice that fascinates children and that's what this game has going mm -hmm. for it really it's the probability of what's going to come up it's like guessing it's almost magical i think to children to see what's going to happen next with the dice. And I think that that's, that's a valuable yeah, activity. Yeah. And, you know, 
people they will start off you know cheering for pink and then pink's all the way last they're like i don't think pink's gonna win i'm gonna start cheering for blue um and you can also try and pick which one you think will come in last and talk about oh you know how far how likely do we think it is that blue is gonna come in first now that it's all the way up here versus pink um but it's just a, like baby camelot it is <laughs> it's really so there's a game for uh for about the kindergarten age group called Monza that we may have talked about earlier. That's yep. um, sort of a sequence programming game for uh, race cars. And it's a little bit more complex than this one. Uh, but this is a great game to play before you play Monza uh, <laughs> because it gets you used to you know matching up the colors of the dice. And the dice are, I believe, the same dice. Um, yep. And it's not that hard to play. And sometimes it's just great to have a game that um, you can feel mastery over. Uh, well, and this would important. be good, good too because I feel like children could play this without adult intervention at all. It's true. Um, and could teach other children how to play it. Yeah, yes. for sure. This is definitely an awesome um, like play at, at grandma and grandpa's house type game. I think that what Rich said too is something that's incredibly important for children all the way up through probably even middle school is mastery, feeling mastery over a game. A lot of times we get people in, and um, you won't believe this, but a lot of times their children are the brightest human beings on the face <laughs> of the planet, and um, they want them to be playing really sophisticated games. They want them chess. to play, it, well, chess, perhaps, <laughs> when they're three, but um, or five, and it's still too early, but uh, you don't get me started on chess for five-year-olds, but you... A lot of times, kids like to play games that are for slightly younger kids than they are because they feel good at it. They feel like they're capable of it. They understand it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try and stretch them. And, and young children can play pretty complex games once they get used to it. But it's not bad to play a game that's simple, especially when you're a young kid and need to build some self-confidence and mastery. Yep, and especially if you're like a kid who might be from a tough place. Yeah. Okay, what's next? I, uh, I found it. Oh. It's in front of you, yep. Richard Scary, busy town, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. <laughs> we actually can't show this game because it's so big. The board is like six feet long, um, but it is amazing this is one of the games that when we would take it to uh classes it's everyone like would be yeah all the early childhood kids um would be super have a blast crawling all over it looking for the different things um it's a search and find uh cooperative game our job is That's to get through the uh, our job is to get through the richard scary uh busy town and we want to be the able to get to Picnic Island before the pigs who are hanging out on Picnic Island eat all of the food off the picnic. We want to be sure we get there in time. And they have great food at this picnic, like jello molds. Right. Or, or <laughs> I find like very funny. An entire jar of pickles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, you don't take pickles to your picnic? Not a jar. I don't really? usually take an entire jar. I do. <laughs> um, but we've got um, very simple like spinner that'll have uh, different numbers on the different uh, sections of the spinner and occasionally if you don't get a number when you get a number you move your little car however many spaces you got but when you get a uh, gold bug instead that's when it turns into a seek and find and we're all working as a team because we'll flip over a bucket and then we're going to be crawling all over looking for all the buckets with our magnifying glasses and setting them down and after oh there's a sand timer too which is so much fun yeah. <laughs> um, after the sand timer runs down you know for each bucket that we've covered with our magnifying glasses on the picture, we all as a team get to move that many spaces. So if we find three buckets, everybody gets to move forward three spaces. So it's incentivizing you to work together as a team. And also, you know, we can't all get to Picnic Island until we all get to the ferry mm -hmm. together. Um, it's a, it's really, really clever. Um, and it's also just a good kind of like crawl around game if we need to get a little bit of the wiggles mm -hmm. out. Um, it's one that I have a, a great deal of affection for um, and pretty much recommend to just about anyone yeah. who has the space for it. It is like a six foot long. But don't let that scare you. It yeah. fits on yeah. most tables. Yeah, it fits on most long dining room tables. It also 
And th I really, really suggest just rolling it out on the middle of the living room yeah. floor. Mm -hmm. This is definitely one that you want to get down on the ground for and crawl around and try and find all the things. The kids love that. And it does. It's a, I mean, it's like a big rug. Mm -hmm. So you can just kind of throw it out in their room or down the hall or whatever. It works great. And you get to play as Lily Worm. Right. <laughs> I love Lily Worm. <laughs> And it's also really nice because it does have a Richard Scary theme. So you can talk about your neighborhood and what all is happening in the town and tie it back to um, reading uh, bedtime stories and stuff like that, which is great. Yeah, there's so much going on in the illustrations. Yep. Okay. Now what's next? Um, piss. Piss. Ooh. Piss. We can even play a quick round play of piss. Play a round of piss, yeah. Um, this is a great matching game. Um, it's snakes. It's sort of like My First Carcassonne, but not to be confused with My First Carcassonne, which is a very great game. Uh, this one, we've got stacks of cards that are going to turn into snakes. So when we flip over a piece of the snake, um, bang, I've got the purple head, and any purple piece can hook in there, and eventually that snake's going to get finished. Ooh. So purple goes there. Oh, I'm starting a new snake. I have a yellow tail. All right. And I've Ooh. got a rainbow tail. Yes. And rainbow is one of the special wild pieces that can fit anywhere. Um, so it'll fit here. And I can count one, two, three pieces of this snake and take all these pieces off into my pile. Because he finished a snake, he gets them. Yep. Um, I've great. played this one usually cooperatively. This is a great game. Um, where if you just need sort of a slow, uh, relaxing kind of Oops, thing to put I'm together, I've cheating. had kids do this sure. sort of as a solitaire mm -hmm. game. Trying um, to make the longest snake possible. Right. Yeah, I feel like every class I've ever taught, we've taken this to, and there's one kid who kind of sits on the rug and tries to build <laughs> the, the longest, longest snake. possible snake ever, yeah. which is kind of cool. Ooh, you're going so we've got after two snakes. We have two time. snakes going. And a blue head. Oh. I That's not helpful gonna, at all. No, that was not helpful. This is another great one that at least my daughter loves to play this with her grandmothers, and neither of them like particularly play games. So this is something that like everyone can understand. We can explain it in two minutes, oh, and everyone has a good time playing it. And it's color matching too, which is something we go over in preschool. Or you can even talk about, you know, if I try to put this tail here because it matches well, that's not a snake. You made a worm. I made a worm. <laughs> and so you're matching things up, you're building snakes, it's all kinds. You're so being much. strategic, like maybe I don't want to make this snake longer because I think that Kathleen's going to get it and she'll win. Right. And uh, out of fear of Kathleen winning another game, yeah, we're going to put it away. We're going to put this one away. <laughs> she takes the lead. Uh, um, if anybody ever is out there watching and has any questions or has recommendations of games that their children love to play, we're, um, please chat with us. We love hearing about you in the chat. I know that when we do this live, a lot of times it's a bad time of night, yeah. especially for parents that have preschoolers, but, um, so lots of them watch it afterwards. But if you have any questions or do anything, um, let us know. So hedgehogs are apparently all the rage this year. Everybody's doing hedgehog stuff. And this is a new game by Haba, again, um, called Hedgehog Haberdashery. No, just Haberdash. Oh, Haberdash. Hedgehog Haberdash. And I think this is the most adorable game in the whole world. There are these adorable hedgehogs. With glasses. All the baby hedgehogs uh, want to be prickly like their parents, uh, but their prickles haven't come all the way in, um, which is the technical term for the hedgehog's spines. <laughs> um, and uh, in order to imitate the, the grown-up hedgehogs, they're going to be grabbing leaves and plucking them into their back, and we're going to help them do that by rolling this die. So, oh no! Oh no! I got a win. So nothing's going to happen on the first turn. <laughs> But maybe Melissa will be luckier than I and get some leaves. Oh, Ooh, got you two got leaves. two leaves. So what color are you? I'm are you orange. Are you orange? I'm blue. What color are you going to be? I'll be pink. Okay. So I got an orange one. And now I have... Oh, so each of these leaves has two colors on it. And so I can put it 
in mine because it has an orange on it. So I'm going to put orange side up because I want to, you know, match because that's, of course, very important to baby hedgehogs. So now this one doesn't have any orange on it, so I get to give it to anyone? Anyone. Anybody. You could either you give, give it. it to him or you could give it to Yellow, which is not in the game. Right. You're going <laughs> to... I'm like, you're going to give it to Rich? Okay, I get the die. There you go. And the die. Oh, my goodness. Okay, come on. Oh, I got one, at least. Oh, and it's oh, also look at the Oh, look! I have yellow and blue. Should I give it to yellow, or should I take it for my own hedgehog? <laughs> I think I'm going to take it for my own hedgehog. I feel like I'm being mocked. <laughs> <laughs> so this game like reminds me quite favorably of uh, Pengaloo. Oh, now you got the win. Now blow. you got yeah, So oh, I, I can it. blow away any leaf out of a hedgehog, and I'll take this yellow one, but it matches on the underneath the pink that my hedgehog is. So I'll okay. turn it around, and now I've got my first spawn. Um, okay, so that's an important part. So this is one of the youngest games I've seen where you're, like, stealing stuff, potentially, from another player. And I've got to tell you, for some kids, that is hard and worth practicing. Oh, no. Um, this one. Does it oh. match anything? It does. It matches yellow. Oh. Oh. You stole Catholic. my... So, you know, two, we can react to that by throwing our hedgehog across the room, or <laughs> or I can say, er, I don't like that. Yep. I'm going to keep playing, though, because I think I can come back. Despite yeah. when. Uh, I have a blue one there, and then this is yellow. I'm not going to give it yellow to is gonna win. Okay. Yellow might win, and uh, the rules say if a hedgehog that is not controlled by a player wins the game, that's okay. You can always play again. <laughs> Uh, so I've got... You get two. I got two. This one fits there. And this one does... I think this is an orange Ooh, or a orange blue. Orange or blue. Team like, staff. Oh, team man, staff not team staff. Oh. Although I did just break a rule. I should give it to you so that you put it in yourself. Oh, that's true. You're yeah. supposed to put it in yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with you putting the leaves of my side. Blue, blue, blue. Let's see. I got a blue... Mm hmm. Yellow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yay. Uh -huh. okay, and look I how see cute how they are. are. Look how cute they are. Um, I think it's important to notice that there's also a little bit of a memory aspect oh because my. if you see, people are supposed to show you what both of the colors are, and as you put them into your hedgehog, if you can remember that one has your color on the bottom. If you happen to get the wind, you can steal, steal that it. piece. Yeah. Um, I find that as we were talking about stealing Ooh. can be very hard for kids. Um, just take it out of the game if yeah. it's too much. Uh, I think the most important thing with kids who are very, very young is learning to have fun playing a game. Mm -hmm. um, if, if they're miserable, it's not really worth it. I know... <laughs> Um, my son liked Candyland a lot, which is possibly one of the games that I hate more than any game <laughs> on earth. Um, but he, he was fine winning and losing. He was not fine. He would get in his head somehow some of the special candy. And it wasn't always the same one. Sometimes it was like the peppermint or sometimes it was the ice cream cone or whatever. And if he didn't get that, he would just fall all apart and like it was just miserable and so um That's why Kathleen doesn't like Candyland yeah oh gosh it was so miserable but you know what happened weirdly he accidentally left it out one day and I don't know what happened but all of those special cards <laughs> got lost <laughs> and so we played Candyland without any special cards until yeah I know I hate when that happens but I mean it it was a much happier experience Okay, I think we're done. Yeah, sure. That's how hedgehog haberdash That is hedgehog haberdash. And it's so cute. All right. It is really cute. And then we're going to talk about Barnyard Bunch. Oh, Ooh, yes. Barnyard Another Bunch. Another new Hava game. Yeah, I really like we, Hava games. Yeah, we have a Hava problem. It's true. It's not really a problem, though. They're just all so well done. One of these hedgehogs has sunglasses, which uh -huh. makes it cooler than all the other hedgehogs, which just have regular glasses. Mm, uh, the pink one that's... has a flower on her glasses. Oh, I mean, that's true. The blue one has sunglasses because he has bugs in his spines. Uh... He has bugs in his what? In his spines. 
Oh, why does he have bugs in his spine? I don't know. That's just what they gave him. Like, this one has sticks, this one has leaves, this one has flowers, and they gave that one bugs. Oh, they're like little beetles. Little beetles, yeah. It's fine. Don't forget your guy. Yes. Barnyard Bunch! And Barnyard Bunch is probably the most complex of all of the games we're looking at today. Um, and I love this game. I played this at Toy Fair for the first time. Uh, this year. It was, I really like it. It's super cute. I think it's adorable. I mean, it's a great thing to talk about, like, animal sounds. Mm. Ooh, ribbit, ribbit. So, when you are setting this game up, the only thing that you have to be aware of is that one pathway goes out from each of the little spaces. The barn goes in the middle. And the color of the space on the middle piece cannot match the first color on the pathway. And that's really all you have to do. And then you randomly put out a whole bunch of farm animals. Got a pig. And a frog, which we're not sure why the frog's on the farm, but it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. What is this one? Is a whale? That's a mouse. That's a mouse. Oh, it's a mouse. Or a rat. I thought it was a whale. <laughs> there are no whales on this farm. <laughs> the whale farm. Oh, yes. The farm you're playing with. Um, another great hint for playing games with small children is roll the die in the lid oh of goodness, the game. Yes. Oh, yes. It's very important. Or if they're really young and it's hard, or you have like dogs that are kind of jerks like mine and they eat things, you I can't stress the plastic Tupperware with dice in it enough. Yes, um, that works great too. Keeps them in control. <laughs> yes. So this has a special die with colors, and then it's got two symbols. It's got a dog, and it's got a farmer symbol. Uh, and those are important, because when we roll colors, you're going to look at uh, any animal that is on that color. So I just rolled yellow, and the duck is on yellow, and the cow is on yellow, so I get to choose. Is the cow going to start getting away, or is the duck going to start getting away? And I think the cow is out of the pasture. It's starting to roam free. Um, and it's going to be our job to make sure that by the time we get through this deck of cards, none of the animals have made it out. Um, so I got this first card here. It looks like a lure to bring the duck back. So had the duck gone instead, I could have brought the duck back. But I already made my choice. This isn't going to do anything this turn. Um, and it's now going to be what this is going to do. I got blue. I'm going to go with this cat here. Is it a cat or a dog? It's it a cat. Because the dog is on our side. It's a oh, dear. oh man, the sheep. The sheep down. Sheep down. <laughs> Sorry, sheep. Um, it's a cat with its head turned to the side. Oh, we also we thought it was like a Scotty duck too, but it's a it's a cat. Yeah. Okay. The duck is not. The duck was here. No, he wasn't. He didn't move. The cow moved. It's fine. Okay. Sort okay. of. And then I got mud, and pigs like mud. But, but the pig's not the at pig's all. not there. Okay. Uh, yellow. I'm going to move the duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hazard today. Yeah, I know. Can you move the duck, please? One space? <laughs> I'm going to stop touching pigs Can now. you flip my card? Because I can't read. Your card is some string. <laughs> oh, to get the kitty cat back. You're right. Look, there is a kitty cat. That's charming. So the cat's going to go back. Yeah, the cat gets to go back to the barn because I have... Blue. Blue. Anything blue. on a blue space Pink. can move. Pink. Pink. But I want to move the cow. No! The cow's getting as far away from Oh, now home. I feel like we're in peril. So <laughs> that's another thing that will happen often when you're playing uh, games with kids is that they will make very suboptimal choices. <laughs> and I strongly advocate for just letting them make the wrong choice. Yes, they have to learn that that doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, rather than being like, oh, we shouldn't do that. It's more like, let's see what happens. Um, so I've got the, grit, the mouse here wants to go, and it's going to go one more space. Squeak, squeak, squeak. All right. I'm going with animal mind. Blue. I'm with this kitty cat now. Oh, mouse has cheese. Squeak, squeak, squeak. And if you flip over the card, they only go back one space, or do they go all the way back? It's only if they get the uh, dog. The, the dog sends them all the way back. Everything else only sends them one space back. Okay. Blue. Uh, I'm going to move the piggy. Wink, wink, wink. All right, and then here's your new card. It's a carrot. A carrot for, for the horse. The horse, but the horse hasn't taken off yet. Well, it gets a carrot for hanging out in the barn and being so nice. <laughs> Good horse. Ooh, uh -oh. farmer. Far farmer. So as a team, we can decide which animal we want to send back one space because the, the farmer's gone. The duck? The okay. duck. Uh, the 
cow. I think it's, it's two to one. We're going to duck. Is going duck, 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 duck. Cow makes more sense, but we're playing like children. Yeah. Oh, I got a fly as well for the frog who's already at home. Aww. He's Hello. having his fly with the horse and is having his uh, carrot. Carrot. Another carrot for the horse. Carrot for the horse. Um. This is really blue. Cute. This is super cute. It is super cute. Uh oh. What happens if nothing's on blue? Well, then you get to draw your card. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's good. Yeah, huh? that's that's pretty good because our job is to just get through the deck of cards and. Uh, it's a duck. Uh oh, right. the duck, duck has to move. He's waddling away. Oh no, duck! All right. Come back, duck. Farmer. Farmer. So we can bring the the duck back one space. Okay. And good then. Idea. We've got a ball of string to bring the kitty back, kitty back once one more. space. Nobody's rolled the dog yet. Yeah. No. Farmer. Farmer. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> 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 so cow, cow. Ooh, I was There's really our, rough. Wait, wait, wait. our prize cow. That was getting Oh, cat. no. Kitty cat. Go back, kitty cat. Go back. Boo. Uh oh. And we have a cow on blue. Uh -oh. Cow's getting away again. Stubborn cow. Here's your new card. Uh, it's a froggy. Froggy oh, has thrown away. The dog. Oh, the dog. Oh, the dog. So the dog is special because it lets you bring back even something that's all the way at the, as far as it can go, all the way back to the barn. Just one thing. One Just thing. One, uh, one yeah. thing. One dog. One thing. All right, and then I'll draw. The horse is out. The horse is out of the barn. Yeah. So. Um, and that is, and that is Farnyard Bunch. Farnyard Bunch works. And it's so cute. These pieces are so cute. They're really cute. I think kids would love this. Um, I have not played it with a child yet because we got it during the quarantine. Yeah. And we haven't had classes. But it's, um, I think it's super adorable. I love this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can stack these itty bitty animals on top of each other. Although the, the target audience is going to maybe struggle to balance them. But as you get a little older... <laughs> they are kind of like tiny animal fun animals. <laughs> uh, Just saying that to bother me. <laughs> they are. Just a little bit. And it's fun. It's just a they're fun little pieces. I like I like the pieces a lot. <laughs> and that was some of our favorite preschool games. Um, there are lots, lots more. It's funny. I went to a game store before I opened Labyrinth a long time ago. And my son, I think, was six, and we went in, and they had a couple blue-orange games and not really much else. And the gentleman told me, he's like, well, they don't really make games for young kids. And they do. They make lots of lots yeah. of really amazing games for young children. And I've always been really proud that Labyrinth has a pretty good selection of um, preschool, elementary school aged um, mm -hmm. games. And games that parents will enjoy, too. Um, I think it's really important when you're playing with a child, just like when my son used to make me play Candyland, it's important that you're enjoying the game. And even though some of these are silly and, and um, kind of easy, I really enjoy playing yeah. all of these with children. So there, there are definitely games out there that can... Um, keep you entertained at least. And yeah. I think a benefit to a lot of these is some of my problems with certain children's games are you get stuck in these like evil loops where the game doesn't end and everyone's getting tired of it, but the game is still going, which is just awful. These all end and like you don't have to like cheat or fiddle with anything. They have a definitive end. Like you will get to the end of that stack of cards. Yeah. And that's I just nice. I think that's important because you always want to like quit on a high note. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any other really great tips for um, <clears throat> caregivers and parents who have preschoolers? I would say uh, <laughs> even if, yeah, ramp up your enthusiasm while you're playing the game, even if you're not as enthusiastic mm -hmm. uh, at first. It helps a lot. It um, does help a lot. Because uh, the more you pretend that you're enthusiastic, the more you become enthusiastic, and before you know it, you're going to have a lot of fun playing yeah. Games. And most of the ones that we showed, you won't really even have to fake it. They're yeah, they're fun really games. fun. Well, and I think, too, um, I think it's important to know, generally on a, as we said, all children are different. Some children are, are innately better at spatial reasoning. Some are innately better at memory. Some are innately better at storytelling. So finding what your child enjoys 
but also exposing them to other ideas is really important. Um, building skills like spatial reasoning and stuff at a very young age, really, like I have seen it develop that in a child, doing games and puzzles and stuff. I have seen children grow into things that they weren't necessarily as good at when they first started. So it, sometimes it takes a little bit of patience, mm -hmm. but for those gamer parents out there, you can, if you expose your kid to games, if you're patient with them, if you're um, enjoy it and just be silly with it and not super serious, you can get kids playing some pretty sophisticated yeah. games pretty early. Um, I think that probably about 18 months to two years old is when most kids can start doing some very, very basic games. Mm -hmm. Three is when they can start taking turns and kind of being a little bit better at like actual gameplay. And then by four or five, they can be playing yeah. games. Um, by six or seven, they can play most, like if they have started at two, they can play a lot of stuff by the time that they read. And they will beat you. Yes. Yeah. A lot. By eight or nine, they'll start destroying you. Yes. But they start beating you at five and six, and that's it's okay. Especially, uh, we didn't show Spot It, but oh my gosh. Uh, Kids beat me at Spot It every time I play. Any goblet Gobblers. Oh, yeah. Children uh, beat yeah. me at Goblet Gobblers all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. But anyway, that's, uh, that's our show for you this week. Yeah. We are Labyrinth Games and Puzzles. If you have um, young childhood kids, we are doing our Enchanted Labyrinth for uh, five to eight-year-olds um, on Saturday mornings. Uh, Melissa is running it. It's amazing. It's like a role-playing game for little kids based on um, Magic Treehouse and Magic School Bus and, and the stories like that it. kind of thing. The kids love it. It's every Saturday morning. Um, we also have all of these and many, many more games on our website, which is store.labyrinthgameshop.com. Um, if you're interested in game schooling and learning through games, we have a filter on our website called the Game Schooling Filter, and you can look at by age and by subject matter. Um, I think it's a really great resource that I haven't seen on a lot of store sites, mm -hmm. and we're always adding things. We're always um trying to categorize even more games mm -hmm. it's kind of a work in progress our website is pretty new mm -hmm. but we're getting there and i hope all of you enjoy it yeah. and thanks for joining us and rich and i are always happy to talk your ear off about games yeah <laughs> so you can always give the store a call yeah thank you thank bye you. everybody